The red planet, Mars, has been estimated by a postdoctoral research fellow in robotics at West Virginia University to be littered with more than 7,000 kilograms of human trash. How can this be given that humans are yet to set foot on the red planet? Watch this video to the end to find out and get informed about other matters that are related to Mars. First up, Mars, the red planet, has a large amount of human trash on it. Mars is a distant fantasy. That's not to say that people haven't arrived on the planet. We have, albeit in directly through our rover's presence on the planet's red soil. However, no human has ever set foot on the surface of Mars. However, a recent study shows that our species has already left more than 15,000 pounds, 7,000 kilograms of waste on the red planet. Kagri Kilic, a postdoctoral research fellow in robotics at West Virginia University, calculates that there is 15,694 pounds or around 7,118.6 kilograms of human waste on the red planet. He calculates this estimate by analyzing the mass of all Mars rovers and orbiters and subtracting the weight of those still in operation. According to Daily Mail, the debris consists of disused equipment, idle rockets, and spacecraft that have crashed onto the planet, including the Soviet Union's Mars Orbiter 2 that landed there in 1971. Scientists worry that our species is not only destroying yet another planet while fighting to rescue our own, but that this rubbish may also contaminate samples being collected by NASA's Perseverance rover and jeopardize expensive expeditions to look for life on Mars. According to the article, however, many of the scrap components had to be abandoned to protect the ships as they flew through the harsh atmosphere of the red planet. An illustration of this is NASA's Perseverance, which endured seven minutes of hell when it touched down in February 2021 and produced an unavoidable amount of trash. There are now nine inactive spacecraft stranded on Mars. These include the Mars 3 and Mars 6 landers, the Viking 1 and Viking 2 landers, the the Sojourner rover, the Shirapelli lander of the European Space Agency, the Phoenix lander, the Spirit rover, and the Opportunity rover. According to Killich, most robots are still functional and not viewed as scrap metal by space organizations, but as historical artifacts. Next up, an unbelievable image of a UFO-like entity on Mars was taken by NASA. NASA took a remarkable picture on Mars. It displays what appears to be a UFO lying on Mars' surface. Is this a car from Mars? Is this a transit ship between galaxies. What exactly is it? We must first acknowledge that it would have been the best thing if it had been a UFO or an item of alien technology. However, the thing in the image is human-made. It's a fragment of a destroyed spacecraft that belongs to NASA. The back shell in the image came off the space agency's Perseverance rover in February 2021. However, the photographs exude alien sensations, in the words of NASA engineer Ian Clark. After spending a year on Mars, the Perseverance rover's robotic helicopter companion Ingenuity took the pictures. Ingenuity took a set of 10 pictures during its 26th trip. In the photos, it's possible to see both the back shell and the parachute that supported Perseverance and Ingenuity's descent to Mars. According to the New York Times, analyzing the back shell's remains could be helpful for NASA's upcoming Mars mission, codenamed Mars Sample Return. The back shell isn't simply waste in space. Next, a massive Mars dust storm threatens NASA's InSight lander. In November 2018, NASA's InSight lander landed on the red planet to investigate its geology and seismic activity. However, the lander depends on the energy captured by its solar panels, and because Mars is a notoriously dusty planet, debris has been placed in thick layers on the panels, significantly decreasing the amount of energy the robot can produce. The mission's conclusion had been predicted by scientists for several months, and now a dust storm the size of a continent is obscuring the Martian sky and affecting power generation even more. Chuck Scott, the project manager for InSight, at the California-based Jet Propulsion Laboratory of NASA said that in terms of power, they were somewhere around the bottom of our ladder, but that currently they are on the ground floor. He then said that if they could survive this, they could work through the winter, but he would be concerned about the next storm. Normally, InSight would produce 425 watt hours per Martian day or so, but this week it is only producing 275. Scott previously told Space.com that the lander requires an average of 300 watt hours per soul to run the seismometer communications, and fundamental tasks. While predictions made earlier this year indicated that the mission might conclude in the late summer, a stretch of calm weather at the lander site in Elysium Planitia extended that schedule by a few months. However, mission personnel has been aware the entire time that InSight could be destroyed by a sufficiently enough dust storm. Then, on September 21st, photos taken by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter MRO, showed a sizable dust storm 2,175 miles or 3,500 kilometers 
kilometers from the lander. Power generation was consistent for a while, but by Monday, October 3rd, the skies over InSight were growing gloomier, and the lander was beginning to feel the effects of the storm. According to the announcement, InSight has turned down the lander seismometer for two weeks in order to conserve energy in the hopes of surviving the storm. In order to continue collecting scientific data, mission personnel chose to keep the seismometer running as long as possible. Most recently, the equipment had been alternating between operations and rest every 24 hours. As a result of that choice, InSight's mission will not be terminated by NASA, unlike the majority of other spacecraft. As opposed to that, the lander will just go silent when the power finally runs out. InSight might yet be able to weather this specific storm. The dust storm's expansion has slowed, and its clouds aren't expanding as swiftly, according to MRO measurements. Even though this incident may calm down, another storm will eventually form. Given the shifting Martian seasons, scientists had anticipated that dust storm activity would increase recently. This is the third storm of the year, according to NASA. NASA's Mars mission shields up for tests. Any space mission, including NASA's Mars sample return, could be harmed by micrometeorites. The miniature rocks can move at up to 50 miles per second, according to Bruno Sarli, a NASA engineer at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Even dust may damage a spacecraft at these speeds. Sarli is in charge of a group that is developing shields to guard NASA's Mars Earth entry system against micrometeorites and other space junk. He recently visited a NASA lab created to safely replicate hazardous strikes in order to test the team's shields and computer simulations. The Remote Hypervelocity Test Laboratory at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in Las Cruces, New Mexico, has supported every human spaceflight program from the space shuttle through Artemis. It is a remote location surrounded by dunes. The lab also supports testing for the commercial crew, commercial resupply, and international space station projects. In the lab, objects are accelerated to speeds that imitate the impacts of micrometeorites and orbital debris on spacecraft shielding. Similar to how a typical gun works, the first stage's propellant is gunpowder. The second stage works like a vehicle piston by forcing gas into a smaller tube using highly compressed hydrogen gas. The building would be completely leveled if the gun were to burst due to its extreme pressure. Sarli explained that they remained in the bunker throughout the test because of this. Four two-stage light gas guns, each calibrated at 0.17 caliber, 0.177 inch bore diameter, 0.50 caliber, 0.60 inch bore diameter, and 1 inch, 1.00 inch bore diameter, are available at NASA's Remote Hypervelocity Test Laboratory. From the gunpowder breach to the end of the target chamber outdoors, the 1 inch range measures 160 feet. Engineers prepared for a 1 second experiment over the course of 3 days. They used the lab's medium sized, high pressure, 2 stage light gas pistol, which can fire small pellets at speeds of 16 to 22 feet per second and has a range of 50 calibers. At that pace, Dennis Garcia, the 0.50 caliber test conductor at White Sands, said that one could get from San Francisco to New York in five minutes. NASA's Ingenuity helicopter discovers foreign object debris on Mars. In the video, the Ingenuity chopper on Mars was beaming back. Engineers noticed an alien object on the surface. During the helicopter's 33rd hop on the alien globe, the object was captured on video by the navigation camera. The foreign object debris is visible in Flight 33 navcam imagery from the first frames up until roughly halfway through the video, when it dropped from the leg and drifted back to the Martian surface, according to a blog post from Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The machine is not harmed, according to the telemetry data, but post-flight search and transfer have turned out to be nominal. JPL's report on the quadcopter also stated that the Ingenuity and Perseverance Mars 2020 teams are endeavoring to determine the source of the debris. The helicopter's 33rd flight on Mars saw it travel a distance of 111.238 meters while ascending to a height of 10 meters above the ground. The helicopter hovered in the air for 55.61 seconds, while revving at a speed of 4.75 meters per second. The flight's objective was to reposition the helicopter. The tiny autonomous airplane has been guiding the Perseverance rover for more than a year since it arrived on Mars. During that time, it has shown that it's capable of flying in the thin air of the red planet. We have come to the end of the video. Now that we have updated you all about NASA's Mars-related endeavors, what other space-related happenings would you like to know about? Inform us in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.